In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. I did a short We bit. just had a storm here in McKinney, Texas. And this is a literal first for us. I am 50 years old and never in my life have I seen a sky like that. What the hell is going on? Looking at the comments of this video, a lot of people are saying that they are momentous clouds. I've seen some really swirly looking clouds like that, but never so ripply and so... A witness in Alberta, Canada has captured what sounds like trumpets in their skies. The question though we need to ask ourselves, what is really causing this? This phenomenon has been heard by dozens and hundreds of people in different countries from the U.S. to Mexico to Ireland and now Canada. There has to be a cause, but what that is, we don't know. Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. I'm seeing more and more of these trumpets playing in the sky videos as I'm scrolling through TikTok. They kind of make their rounds like they were here a few months ago pretty heavy. They disappeared and now they're coming back. I think that it's some kind of mining work or where they're digging into the earth with some kind of massive rig. That's my guess as to where that noise is coming from. Leave a comment on your theories of what you think it is. You ready for a hot take? Sure. If I could choose to pick one animal to put into extinction, kangaroos. Okay. Yeah, Josh would agree with you on that. They're scary. Okay, they are scary. Not only are they super buff, they kick you in the face and they can kill you. They can drown you. <gasps> oh. Drown you? No, you don't know about this? Okay. This is nuts. You can look it up. It is 100% a real thing. If a kangaroo is in danger, they will flee into the water when they're being chased. Stop it. And no joke, there's photos of them just standing chest deep up in the water. Just going, Stop it. And if you come in there, they will pick you up and push you down and they will drown you. Mm -mm. And the thing is, they won't even eat you because that's, that's not what they mean. eat. I think they, they're, I think they're herbivores. They drown you. It's one thing to like attack them and like choke them out on land or something, oh but to drown gosh. something, that they're, would be. They're a nuisance, right? In dude, Australia? Yeah, they're crazy. They're like all they, over the place. You can just like kill them like they're. Just imagine being drowned by a kangaroo. I might, <laughs> I might watch them in the water. It's real fine. All right. Same siphon off. Come on. Right okay. Yeah. Hey, if water feels good, I like it. Oh, no, yeah. Why'd you do this to me? It really surprises me that we have not utilized them as a working animal animal more than what we have, but they're pretty scary looking. You'd never catch me approaching one in the water, that's for sure. Or probably one in general, to be honest. You remember that Las Vegas video? You know, the one that everyone's talking about that they see aliens and even, even I was like, bullshit, you can't see anything in there? Oh, dude, listen, somebody just sent me a video and you can see the fucking alien right here. This video is actually posted fairly recent, but this is an old topic. I kind of can see the face there. It does look like a giant alien-esque head. I think people are trying to reach a little too far on this one now. It, it probably needs to be laid to rest at this point. I probably will not play any more of these types of videos in regards to this Las Vegas incident. The Washington Monument is nothing more than the Egyptian Cleopatra's Needle. 
As a matter of fact, if you fly over Washington, D.C. and look down, and you will see that it is laid out in a tremendous pyramid with the Capitol building in the triangle at the top. There's the long waterway, which is the River Styx, which is out in front of the Cleopatra's Needle. And, of course, at the end is the Magic Circle, the Masonic Circle. So it all has to do with ancient occult secret societies, fraternal orders, and their symbolism. That is African symbolism, but Latin language. Language because the new order was going to be made up of a white society, a white elitist society. And it would be based on the old mysticism and religion and philosophy of Africa, but it would be a new Africa or a new Egypt. I bet there's so many hidden messages and meanings behind some of these structures that have been built for elites. We probably don't even know half of it. And it does make me wonder if a lot of the elites come from Africa. There's a lot of subtle similarities between America and things that they represent that kind of resembles things from Egypt. Let me know what you guys think about this. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video, and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everyone that's subscribed and or watching, thank you so much for being subscribed, and thank you so much for watching. The way the craft that we worked on flies is it doesn't fly like a conventional aircraft does, and it doesn't fly like a flying saucer would in a 1950s movie. It flies belly first. I mean, it may set down conventionally, but it always rotates. It does a roll maneuver, puts its belly towards the target, and then moves away so at high speed. So it would be like speed. a car flying with the wheels forward. Right, right. I mean, it may lift it, land on the wheels, but at some point when it wants to leave, it flips it's going to flips up, points the wheels where it wants to go and takes off. And the gimbal video, you can see the craft do the roll maneuver. And uh, it's really interesting. It behaves exactly like the craft that I worked on. So much like we have different shaped aircrafts and fighter jets and cars, they probably have different shapes of these objects that operate under similar principles. Right. Perhaps. But they all have the same power source. You can't go wrong with Bob Lazar content. I wonder what would happen once the government reveals that all of the UFOs that we've seen are actually just military tech that they've been working on for the past decades and there is no extraterrestrial life out there. I wonder what our conspiracy theories and theories would be next in regards to extraterrestrial or would we just end up stop believing in aliens and just start thinking in angels and demons? I've often wondered that. Right before the sunrise, we seen something special happen in the sky. It was the planetary alignment. This planetary alignment or the planetary parade is going to activate every chakra in our body. Every time there is an alignment or a perfect straight line, it means we are going into the same direction. No longer duality. If you was paying attention to everything that was happening so far in these last couple months, you would notice we had the solar eclipse. We had northern lights. Now we're having a planetary parade. Something major is taking place in the spiritual world. Whatever is taking place in the spiritual world is going to take place in the physical world. There are so many signs that's happening in the sky letting us know that something major is about to take place on this planet. When I speak about something major taking place in the world, I am not talking about the end of the world. I am not speaking about no kind of demonic event. I'm speaking about spiritual activation for people that want spiritual activation. Just pay attention to all the events that's taking place in the sky. April, solar eclipse, May, northern lights, June, planetary alignment. What's next? The reason why this world is so messed up is because of duality. We have two ways to do everything in life. Before it was duality, we had a straight path similar to the planetary alignment. So anytime there is a planetary parade, it's letting us know that something is about to be activated once again within our physical body. Maybe that can explain why I've been having a headache for the past few days. Or it's probably just my allergies. Even my dog is having a hard time dealing with allergies. It always bothers his ears. But when I hear about things like this, it does make me wonder. Maybe it has something to do with this alignment. Let me know in the comments at what you think about this. Do you feel like you've been affected by this? Or is this something that's not even true? I have not done any research on this, so don't hold this video against me. Today, if we could harness the power from a lightning strike, you can power a city for a year off of one lightning bolt. It is a massive amount of electrical energy. 
It is the most powerful electrical phenomenon on this planet is lightning. So by harnessing lightning, mm -hmm. they could produce or harness rather vast amounts of electric energy, which could then be distributed throughout the civilization. For example, the Egyptian pyramids were involved in the terraforming of the upper Eastern Sahara during the Saharan wet period, that by building these structures, they were creating more rain clouds that completely transformed the Sahara from a barren wasteland of sand into an area of lush agricultural development. It's a huge complex that is connected underground. Again, the Tomb of the Birds, these underground mining tunnels that run below the Giza Plateau. What we can see above ground is only 50% of the story. Guys have invented cars to drive 200 miles on one gallon of water. So in 1951, they came up with this concept called the Invention Secrecy Act, which means the government, if they feel any invention could potentially cause any kind of negative attention to the economy, they can choose to take that patent away from you and not do anything with it. In the last 100 years, guys have invented cars to drive 200 miles on one gallon of water. Mechanisms or engines or motors to go 217 miles on gasoline. There's so many different ways that people created that would get cars to drive a lot more miles where you don't need to buy as much gas. But one of the times, one of these patents was tested on a V8 Ford car. Ford says, this works. We can potentially do 200 plus miles per gallon. The next day, collapse in the oil prices in the US because Ward got out. But in many cases, these guys that created these patents, Shell would come out and say, hey, we love your patent. We'd like to buy it from you. Here's 25 million bucks. And you sell it to me. And then what happens? I keep the patent, never release it to the public. They got 6,000 patents that America controlled. Man, that's so crazy. But it's always a shame when they try to patent these and they get shut down or their patents get sold and nothing ever happens of it. I do not know if any of these claims are fact, but man, let me tell you, if I could get 200 miles off of just a gallon of water, that would be amazing. Or if it was just a gallon of gas, that's a lot of mileage. It's crazy on what people in power will do just to keep lining their pockets. I never heard this until recently, but apparently a large portion of Savannah, Georgia is haunted as Really? Yes. Like the whole city? A large portion of the city, yes. So it was around the time of Hurricane Matthew, right? I don't know if you remember that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, so it hit them too, you feel me? And when it hit them, a bunch of shit got f***ed up, you know, obviously. And when everything got f***ed up, there are these trees called, I think they're called live oaks, or people call them century oaks, right? A lot of these trees are like over 100 years old. When the hurricane hit, it knocked over a bunch of these trees. So yeah. hella the trees got like uprooted and you know, whatever. Yeah, they all yeah. tilted over. What people started to find under these trees was insane. They found over, I'm gonna probably say thousands of skeletons. Yeah. Under these trees. Under the trees? Like yeah. they've been there for centuries. And they've been centuries there for or probably hundreds of years. Yeah. As long as some of these trees probably been oh, sprouting. Yeah, and it's crazy because like some of the, the, not even some, most of these bones that they find, they were like infused with the roots, and like the roots growing in them and yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Which is hella crazy, bro. And pretty much people have been saying for the longest time is like, yeah, and it makes sense too. They're saying that there are probably like, bro, like hundreds of thousands of people just buried under Savannah, Georgia, not even like just in the cemeteries yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah, all just over. under the city. So I'm just being real. Exit in Savannah, Georgia off my list, <laughs> oh, bro. I'm cool, bro. I'm like, that's yeah. that's too much death. You know what I mean? Just kinda... now, I think places like old cities got to be the most haunted. Like, you got to think of places like where, like, the battles of Gettysburg. And shit. Oh, like, that was that. God, you know, be hell there, like... yeah, bro. There's wailing spirits <laughs> all around. Are you kidding? I've been to Savannah, Georgia, and I've actually taken some of the ghost tours around the town me and my wife have. It's pretty fun. It's a really nice city. It has some really good places to eat. But the places really weren't too scary. Nothing seemed to be too haunted. Have any of you taken ghost tours in, in Savannah, Georgia? What the hell is going on in this place? Yeah. Of time doesn't even exist in this place. If you're easily scared, this will blow your mind, so please just keep on scrolling right now. Right, so this place right here is in Mexico and by the name of it, it doesn't sound very pleasant. This place right here is known as the Zone of Death. And this place is just bang in the middle of the desert. There's nothing there, no one around, just absolutely nothing. But there's something weird going on here because time just doesn't exist and doesn't 
work here. If you go to this place, your watch will just completely stop working. Phone clocks stop working. Any clock or anything you take there won't work because it interferes with the battery or whatever it may be. Apparently strange signals and frequencies cutting out and just everything is strange in this place, but it's just in the middle of the desert, so why? There are theories about this place, suggesting that when you go to this place, you will see a group of hitchhikers who are asking for your help. And when you do, bad things happen. People who have literally just driven through or entered this place have reported having strange hallucinations, feeling extremely weird. Now this is where it gets crazier again. Of course it does. So this place is actually dead in line with the Bermuda Triangle and the Pyramids. And of course we know both these places are a bit mm, suspicious to say the least. So the main theory is, is there something more going on in these places, something to do with the electricity, especially after finding that new electrical anomaly under the pyramids. Like yeah, there is something serious going on. Dang, that's pretty interesting. I'm always interested in places that start killing batteries and stops your watches and potentially can cause you to have hallucinations. Places like that are highly interesting to me. What's causing all of those weird, strange phenomenon, you know? Let me know your theories in the comments below. Did you know that this Bible prophecy is happening right in front of your eyes? So the Bible says that right before the world ends, that there will be a 200 million man army. And that army will actually march across the Euphrates River once it dries up. I don't know if you've seen recent pictures of the Euphrates River drying up, but it's recently, currently drying up. And not only that, but it's drying up fast. But get this, what if I said that that's not even the crazy part? Recently, China and Russia have formed an alliance. And that can only mean one thing. We are soon to see the return of Jesus Christ. And by we, I mean me and you. Jeff Bezos is building a 500 foot tall clock that will last 10,000 years. Bezos invested 42 million to build the clock inside a mountain. What the f Clock is designed to tick once a year for the next 10,000 years. Known as the clock of the long now or the 10,000 year clock, the project looks to create a timepiece that will outlast human civilization. The idea was first proposed by computer scientist and inventor Danny Hillis in 1989. Hillis envisioned a clock that would tick only once a year with a hand that moves every hundred years and a bell that rings every thousand years. His goal was to design a timekeeping device capable of functioning for 10 millennia. The final plans are now complete and parts for the clock are being manufactured. The construction site for the clock is in the Sierra Diablo Mountain in West Texas, on land owned by Bezos. The clock and chain Burton is about 500 feet tall and 12 feet in diameter. The clock will operate using the Earth's natural temperature fluctuations. It will include five large rooms, each marking anniversaries, the first year, the 10th year, the 100th year, the 1000 year, and the 10,000 year. Bezos stated in an interview, over time, this will take hundreds of years, but over time it will take on the patina of age and then it will become a symbol for long-term thinking. Don't get me wrong. It's an awesome concept and a really cool piece, but is it really necessary to spend $42 million for a clock? That's just bizarre to me. I mean, I guess if you have it, and hey, maybe he is putting that much money elsewhere where it's actually needed, but dang, that's just crazy for a clock. And, it, and like I said, the concept is awesome, and it's going to be really cool 10,000 years from now when someone rediscovers that clock and they're going to be like, aliens. <laughs> you know, that, that's going to be a really cool moment in history. But man, that's a $42 million expense that'll definitely go down in history. Have you ever seen a rainbow eucalyptus tree? I've always wanted to peel the bark. I've never really peeled the bark because I didn't want to hurt it. But there's layers and layers of colors. That's pretty neat. String theory has gone beyond that to propose that there might be 11 dimensions to our universe that we don't. We, you know, we, we don't see all of them. We see three dimensions of space and one dimension of time. But like, maybe that's what we're seeing is we're seeing higher dimensional stuff casting shadow into our space, just like how we cast a shadow on a two dimensional surface, which is like the sidewalk, right? Well, if you were on flat land, you would have no idea that this like crazy 3D monster was, you know, uh, out there. But all you're seeing is the shadow and, and it's called quasi projection. And, and maybe some of the UAPs are not even, they're here. 
but they're not actually from out there. Well, I think what near-death experiences tell us is that there are definitely other dimensions. Um, and there are definitely intelligences on the other side. And whether you label them as, as aliens or UFOs or whatever, I don't know. I really do like the idea that there are other dimensions within the same realm of reality. We just can't see those dimensions and those dimensions cannot see us unless they have the technology to do so. And every once in a while there's an accidental bleed into our dimension from their dimension and vice versa where we bleed into their dimension. I'm a huge fan of that theory. It could definitely be within the realm of possibility, I think. Speaking of the IRS, I saw a video from the early 2000s. Has employed workers for the IRS figured out federal income tax is non-constitutional. Someone said, if you can find the law that says you have to pay, we'll give you $50,000. And that's how the one IRS agent agent found it she's like okay yeah i work for the irs i'm gonna find it and make fifty thousand dollars and she's like there's no law we have to pay federal tax she even said upwards of 60 million people in the u.s were not paying federal income taxes and then one guy he's like yeah i'm not paying taxes he was brought to court and they're like wait a second yeah. we, we don't have a law and so they couldn't charge him with anything but then there's some conspiracy with the titanic there's someone on the titanic that was a politician opposed to collecting taxes for the federal reserve and the rothschild and Rockefeller, they were supposed yeah. to be the titanic they decided not to get on last minute and then these guys that were opposed to the federal reserve died in the titanic a year later federal income tax our founding fathers were very opposed to taxes no taxation without representation they represent that you need to pay me taxes <laughs> i really wish we didn't have to pay federal taxes i think that that's such a scam to a point i kind of agree with state taxes you know help the state that you live in by providing for the roads the school system things like that i understand that a hundred percent but when they want to start involving the federal aspect of it where you're paying the government just in general not necessarily just your state it gets a little crazy i could talk about this kind of stuff for hours it actually kind of makes me mad <laughs> okay so i was just walking out over here I had no idea that any of this stuff over here existed, and I was just checking in between this uh, crack in this wall. And I got back here, and look at this. They are all over the place. Oh my god. Look how cool that bighorn sheep is. And they, they're literally all over the place to the degree Whoa. you can't tell exactly what they are. Okay, wait, be careful. Look on your right shoulder. Look. Oh yeah, there is something. There's something over here too. It's a big long snake is what that is. And let's see over here. Look at that design. Holy cow. Got the hand. Wait, dude, look, look there's all. a bird going down. There's the legs. Here's the wings. And here's the head. The bird's going down. Yeah, it is. And Five fingers, so not four fingers on that. But look at all this stuff back oh, here. Oh, look at that hand. I ain't even got a basketball down here. Look at that. That's pretty cool. I do not know if that's supposed to be really old or not. In the process of finding videos, I thought this was going to be about this giant rock was somehow magically split the way it was because it was kind of split as if it was perfectly sawed and that's pretty cool i do not know if those are recent or if those are old they look pretty old to me and like that one of that big bird that was really cool let me know what you guys think this was do you think this is just something that people did for fun recently or do you think that this is something that's really old definitely didn't expect to see the carvings in the rock let's check this out you got money in your backyard don't even know what it is you know you know what that is right there that's called honeysuckle and i've got a big bush right here it just keeps, I got bushes all over this, uh, this farm right here. And this right here, easiest money you can ever make. They say money don't grow on trees. That's a lie. It grows on trees, bushes, and vines if you know what to look for. So what you're going to do, this is a honeysuckle right here. You're going to pull the stem off, right? And let's see if you can see it on here. You're going to pull the stem off. You see that little bit of honey? That's how you know it's ready. And what you're going to do is you're going to pick each one of these and be ready. Because when you pick the right one, the queen honeysuckle, the main vine, the, the main vein, once you find it, check it out. It's already gotten all over me right here. It comes, and I've done it filled up, you know, probably three gallons, four gallons right here. I sell this right here, guys. $50 for a jar of it. You sell 20 of them, that's $1,000 a day. So what I do is throughout the year, I produce 55-gallon drums full of it. Guys, you can go in your backyard and find this stuff. It's just honeysuckle. That's all it is. All natural. 
But this right here ain't gonna let you down. There's money all over the place. You gotta be looking for it. But this is what I do. And you guys can test a sample out of it on heavilyhoneysuckle.com. Just check it out and uh, get a free sample. Get you an LLC. Get, the only money you got is in your LLC insurance and uh, the jars. But everything else, nature produces it. The money's out there. So like I said, I've done filled this one up. I'm fixing to fill this up and call it a day. I've been out here for about an hour and a half. But uh, anyways, just wanted to let you guys know because a lot of people is not familiar with it. Go check your backyards, walk through the woods, even your neighbor's property. Ask them, hey, do you mind if I go looking for some honeysuckles? They'll let you do it. Give them a little cut, you know? People appreciate that kind of stuff. But guys, you got to use this right here. It's time to grind, get in that beast mode. You know what I mean? Go make that money. It's everywhere. I didn't watch this video all the way through when I saved it initially. I just saved it because I thought it would be an interesting topic to just listen about. And it was pretty interesting. I just wish that he would show us how he harvests all that honeysuckle in that one container. Because the way he made it sound was that he got it from one plant. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. As always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.